We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Okay, so there we are. And I guess it's time to start. I'm Avri Doria. I'm coordinating this meeting, I'm moderating this meeting and such. So why don't we get right to it? Okay, now I should be able to move to the next slide. Okay, so our agenda is this welcome, this intro, and uh, was going to give um, Sandra a chance to say a few words as the chair. And then we've got the go around the table with the, the, the participants with the slides you all sent, which I'm very grateful for. I'm going to ask people to show their slide. And then perhaps if in their two to three minute talk, they can say something about how it was during the year of the pandemic. Oh, yeah, I can take off the mask when I'm doing this. Um, how it was to do their year of or year and a half of school during the pandemic. Then a recap of the year's activities, what was done, what wasn't done, plans for next year, start talking about it. And then we have scheduled um, some concluding remarks by Wolfgang on dynamic coalitions and schools and internet governance in general. Uh, during the plans for next year is when I have um, the slot in for uh, Farzaneh, who's been hired as the consultant to talk about the project. Okay, so moving on, I, um, I have the slides in the order in which they were received. So you'll see your slide at which point you're, the floor is yours. So Glenn, you were the first to send or maybe it was Alfred. Oh, no, no, this one was Glenn. So you were the first to send. So there you are. Great. Uh, good day, everybody. Um, I'm here representing the North American School of Internet Governance. Uh, in terms of timelines, we're a relatively new uh, group. Uh, starting in uh, our first uh, session we did was in March uh, 2018. We were going to cycle back uh, to San Juan again next uh, uh, spring, but uh, that's not going to happen because of the the uh, COVID situation, but San Juan was a very successful event. Uh, many of you that are here uh, attended it uh, either as fellows or, or were there as, as speakers. We followed that up with a pre ICANN event in, in um, uh, actually it's November uh, 2019, my mistake. Uh, the 2021 uh, was originally scheduled for Washington uh, in 20, but that got canceled. Uh, we did our uh, virtual event. It was a two half day events uh, this year in just the last month in November 2021. And uh, we're, we haven't set a date for uh, 2022 for a virtual meeting. So uh, our credo, uh, and, and again, this has been formed as a, a triad. Uh, Eduardo Diaz is the chair of, of the, and we rotate it depending on which country it's, it's in. It's Eduardo, Alfredo, and myself are the three organizers and we have a bunch of other volunteers that that are involved but i'll just read it quickly nasig is an in-depth capacity building event which focuses on teaching the development and application of the shared principles norms rules policies decision making procedures and organization that shaped the evolution of the use of the internet with a focus on north american issues uh, rather than generic. Uh, so NASIC seeks to empower the next generation of internet leaders. So that's our, our spiel. That's our Facebook um, uh, link and our recordings and testimonials are available for our school. So that's uh, NASIC in a nutshell. Thank you. Thank you. Next, is it you again or is Alfredo taking this one? No, this time it'll be me. It'll be this is Alfredo for the record. Uh, I'm uh, the co-founder with uh, Glenn of the uh, Virtual School of Internet Governance, and I just want to mention that uh, our mission is basically 
to keep our school a, as a virtual school. Uh, and we are trying to, to create and promote a comprehensive uh, free online capacity building program on internet governance for anybody. So we have, uh, we started last uh, September in 2020. Uh, we started planning this uh, in March of 2020. Uh, and once the, the lockdown came in place, we, we thought that there, there needed to be something that could be available online without any kind of barriers uh, in terms of, of content, in terms of connectivity and access to the resources. So, so this project is going to keep online and it's going to serve sort of a multilingual online learning platform. And that is because uh, this year in September, 2021, we started a Spanish version of the course. Now, I, I want to mention that the Spanish version is, it's, is sort of linked to the uh, Spanish speaking community. So it's basically Latin America, some islands in the Caribbean and people from, from Spain that might be interested in learning more about the basics of internet governance. Uh, so we don't charge for our course, it's completely free, it's based on the pillars of the uh, IG. And uh, it's basically a, a, an 11 uh, modules uh, course and it's self-paced and we offer a certificate of completion for those that complete some requirements that we have. So uh, Glenn, as I mentioned, and I are the founders, uh, we have some sponsors and that's why we keep it free. And there you can see that there's the link to our website. We have a uh, website, uh, we have a Facebook page and we have a Twitter account and you can follow all the live sessions we have because in our model, we have live sessions, uh, weekly speakers from all over the, the world that are uh, experts in, in some of the areas we, we discuss. So you can look at the past recordings in our YouTube channel, which is also uh, virtual school on internet governance. That's all for me. Thank, Thank you. you. The African school. Do we have someone here from that? No. I guess since I teach there, I can cover it. So if we don't have either Callaway or, or anyone else, so it's a school sponsored by uh, APC, the African Union and Research ICT Africa. For the last two years, because of the pandemic, it was done uh, virtually. Last year, the virtual school was actually an alumni session where instead of having new fellows, it was basically a collection of fellows that had done this, the live school in uh, the, the, the on-site school, residential, in the past. The goal is to develop a pipeline of leading Africans from diverse sectors, backgrounds, and ages with the skills to participate in local and international internet governance structures and shape the future of the internet landscape for Africa's development. Nine editions uh, with the first school held in 2013. I've been lucky to be at most of them. And the last two held virtually, I guess I already said that. Over the years, the school has brought together policymakers, government officials, researchers, regulators, engineers, system administrators, journalists, entrepreneurs, and gender equality and human rights uh, defenders. The impact has been increased national, sub-regional, and global participation in ICT and internet-related policy developments, policy debates, process, and interventions, including schools of internet governance. The alumnus have emerged as experts, let me get rid of my picture in the corner, as experts in the sector, influences, and often come back to the school as part of the faculty. So that's that one. And I beat the clock. I have set a clock now, so on the, on the three minutes. Next one is Ghana. Do we have a representative of the Ghana school to speak to it? Hi, good. Afternoon from Accra, Ghana. I'm representing the Ghana School on Internet Governance. My colleague, Sarata Obane, is also in the call and will be helping me to answer questions when they come. 
So general school and internet governance um, is organized by the e-governance and internet governance foundation for Africa, simply called EDICFA. We started just um, last year, 2020, where we had our first um, fellowship. Our main aim is to empower our fellows with requisite knowledge to become internet governance change agents and leaders both globally and locally. Um, one of our unique, some of our unique selling points or what makes us quite unique among the other schools on internet governance are that one, we do a six weeks online learning, which is a prerequisite for the fellows. They have to pass through this before they will be allowed to join the face-to-face -face session. And during this um, six weeks course, they take a series of online courses on internet governance to broaden their scope. And we also give our ganasic.org domain email to all our fellows. So all our fellows can proudly use our ganasic.org email to um, do whatever they want to do for life. So our uh, phases of our fellowship, one is the application, which is like any other school, they go to the selection, then the online training before we do the face-to-face -face session. Um, our participants are doing very well in the ecosystem so far, and some are also getting very well noticed because some are getting um, ICANN selection, like this uh, ICANN 72, um, we have three of Danasic fellows, the ICAN 72 73, the upcoming ICANN, three of Danasic fellows have been selected for that. And the just held Africa, we have two of the Danasic fellows that have been selected for that. So we are doing quite well in the ecosystem. Thank you. Thank you. And the next, South oh. School. Thank you. Thank you, Avery, and welcome. Those of you in the session, thank you for being with us. I'm so good to see many friends and colleagues here online, and some of you may be oh, not many people in the room. So this is a brief uh, overview of the South School of Internet Governance. We started in 2009. So we, this year we had our 13th edition. Uh, uh, 11 editions were face-to-face, -face, and two, the last two editions were um, virtual and we are trying, we hope to, to come back to the face to face. So at least a hybrid um, format ne next year. So the school is based on uh, uh, nobody, there is no payment for, for the fellows. And if uh, based on our budget, we pay hotel meals and uh, accommodation and the training course for as many fellows as possible. And uh, we have been evolving from 27 fellows in the first year in 2009 up to 300 in the last face-to-face -face meeting in Mexico in 2019. And um, with the virtual editions, we tried to use a kind of a different uh, environment. So we, we hired a special TV studio. You can see it there, some pictures. And we mixed uh, the, the images from the Zoom meeting with, with the experts with uh, some high, high definition cameras in the room. So what we wanted was kind of a different environment for a virtual meeting to make it a little bit more interesting. This year, we added a new, a new feature. We have a eight um, weeks pre-training, pre-self-assisted asynchronous training course because this was requested by fellows before. So we prepared special videos, special podcasts, and special uh, training and reading material for the fellows. This year we had 620 fellows, but we had 3,500 applications. And uh, we have a different um, host every year. This year it was the Ministry of uh, ICTs of Colombia. Each year we have more than 100 experts. And um, this year we had almost 40 different sessions. And uh, a new feature is that we have an application that the fellows can have and they can follow all the event from any device. So they can watch the videos there, they can participate there, they have a messaging 
uh, system for the fellows and they can interact with the experts. Of course, as all the activities that we do from, since day zero are in English and Spanish available. And when we organized it in, in Brazil two times, it was also translated into Portuguese. Um, um, so the, the five days of training are synchronous. And so we have these two sections. Now the, the pre-training, which is a synchronous of eight weeks, and then the training of uh, five days synchronous. Um, so I'm leaving my notes. We have a YouTube channel. All the sessions in Spanish and English are published there. Is This is IGLAC. You can find all the content there. At the beginning, it's all by day, but then our team splits it into the different sections and, and presentations. And uh, also, um, we published a book uh, as the 10th anniversary of the school. It's kind of a big book. It's in Spanish, English, and, and, and Portuguese. Uh, and it has a foreword by Vint Cerf and uh, other very relevant experts from the whole Americas and some from Europe. And uh, can we go to the next one? Thank you, Avery. Uh, we uh, started with the school of uh, the Argentina School of Internet Governance in 2017. Uh, the South School of Internet Governance is focused mainly in Latin America, but now with the virtual event, we have fellows from all over the world. Uh, mainly they are Latinos, Latin Americanos, but but we have people from Europe, North America, Africa, Asia. And um, so that, that's an interesting feature because we had a, a remote participation before, but now with these virtual activities, people is more engaged in, in different uh, events. Uh, here you can see somehow the, the arrangement of the studio and the book. And uh, as I said, we have the YouTube channel, all the materials of the Argentina School of Internet Governance and the Regional School of Internet Governance are published in the in the YouTube channel in both languages. And uh, what we did with our, the Argentina School in the last two years has been also virtual with the same uh, virtual experience that we use for the, for the regional school. But uh, we did a different focus with the Argentina one. We, apart from the general program, we went into um, deep um, content about some provinces. We picked one province from the far north, one from the far south, one for the far west, and one for the center of Argentina, because it's kind of a large country. So realities are totally different in different provinces. So we, we did a, this special edition that was very, very successful. So I think I covered all the points that I wanted to share with you. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. And now let me go to the next one. It's funny, I don't remember which order they're in, so it's a surprise to me each time. This is the Russian Summer School in Internet Governance. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Hope I was hoping to be together with Avi in Katowice, but okay, we are still can see each and hear each other. Okay, uh, I will be talking about the Russian Summer School on Internet Governance. We are quite young. We were established uh, in 2020. Well, uh, exactly in the midst of the pandemic. So uh, all of our activities were online completely from the start and it really affects how we decided to build upon the curriculum and the uh, activities. Uh, on the slide you see, uh, I guess the main outcomes. Uh, so uh, the school is relatively small if compared to the South uh, school that Olga has presented just now. But uh, it's a really good example of the involvement uh, into the internet governance topic in Russia. So for the uh, past year, for 2020, we have more than 100 applications. And finally, we have 38 graduates. Uh, for this year, we have, we have uh, a lesser figure, it's 34, but still the quality is very high and good. Uh, let me just say a few words about the, uh, the educational process. So we decided uh, that our school will be more of academic style. Uh, but again, we invite a lot of speakers from the industry, from the community. On the, on the right, you can see uh, the uh, organizations from where we have speakers. But uh, the main case here is that we make this uh, summer school in Russian language. That is really important. So we are trying to 
locate the IG topic, the internet governance topic for the Russian users, for the Russian uh, youth, for the Russian uh, young uh, professionals and, uh, uh, and educators too. Uh, so what is the average portrait of the school participants? So mainly they are students or graduates, but we also have lecturers and young professionals. And the background expertise of them is very broad. It's international relations, it's politics, it's law, human rights, media and communications. And of course, we have the tech representatives from uh, telecommunications, from programming, from broader ICTs and so forth. And the age is, differs from 18 to 35 years. So it's pretty young school, I must confess. And uh, the main, uh, uh, the main feature is that we partner with the St. Petersburg State University in order to provide with the official uh, certificate of completion of the course. So this is really important uh, for students because they can also take these credits, these educational credits, and bring them to their universities to be uh, included into the diploma. That is also a very good thing. Um, finally, the last words, probably. Um, for the next year, we also plan the online edition. And uh, since our geography of the school participants is located in Russia and the CIS region mainly, this is a good also opportunity because the territories are big and it is quite challenging to bring everybody on, on the venue. So online format proved to be the most effective one. Thanks. Thank you. And the next is Nigeria. Do we have someone from the Nigerian school here? Nope, okay, well, everybody can look at the slide. Since I don't teach there, I won't read it. Um, and I'll move on. Asia Pacific. Uh, hi, um, thanks Avery, and this is Satish uh, from the AP SIG. Uh, we were founded in 2015 as a second tier SIG targeted as at organizers of national uh, SIGs and IGFs. We've been uh, having annual editions from 2016. Uh, all the face-to-face -face editions have been in Bangkok, but this week we are having our face-to-face uh, -face edition at Colombo, Sri Lanka. Uh, and 2020 was virtual, but 2021 is in Colombo. Uh, we changed from a uh, kind of an NGO set up to a community-driven model from 2019. Now we have an elected uh, executive committee, uh, which took charge in July 2019. Uh, we are a not-for-profit. Uh, apologies for the typo there. Uh, we, uh, this time, for instance, we are actually paying for about 25 uh, international fellows and 15 Sri Lankan fellows. So the idea is that we move from country to country, providing local capacity building uh, with the local fellows. Uh, but we also have international fellows. So it's a combination of international and local. Uh, and we provide uh, uh, travel plus uh, accommodation uh, and we don't charge a fee. Uh, so we're trying out this model from this year onwards, post COVID. Uh, we, we are uh, hoping that we'll have more. Uh, at present, there is some interest from other countries on this model. We've been invited for the next year also. So we are hoping that this will catch on. Thank you very much and back to you, Avery. Thank you. And the next is India School. I don't see Amrita here, so I'll speak on this as well. Uh, India School was founded in 2016. We just had our uh, sixth edition held uh, in Hyderabad. Sorry, in, uh, uh, it's a virtual uh, edition hosted by Chennai chapter. Uh, the first edition was actually just prior to the ICANN 57 meeting, which was in Hyderabad. Uh, we had invited at, the, at that point, most of the speakers were from ICANN uh, circles. And we did have a fairly significant launch because all our speakers are global uh, experts. Uh, it, was, it was a joint initiative of two ISOC chapters in 2016, but today it has got all the six ISOC chapters behind it, which is a very unique model. So we have continuity of leadership uh, and continuity of uh, uh, the, the team that's organizing and also the content. Uh, and we have a regional national model of international fellows and local fellows. And we also go from city to city. And it's a not-for-profit model uh, supported by the .in registry, ISOC, ICANN, APNIC, and other agencies. Thank you, and back to you. Thank you. 
Next is that's Armenia. It's called. Uh, and uh, hello, everyone. Um, the Armenian School of Internet Governance was uh, based uh, was uh, started was founded and started its uh, school in um, 2017. Uh, and the first edition was uh, first two editions actually been uh, for the students only, particularly, uh, but covering uh, different uh, professions. Uh, so the first one was five uh, full day course. Uh, you can see this on the slides. Uh, we had uh, 30 participants. Uh, then uh, we went experimenting with the first uh, edition. We found that it was too hard for, for students for five full day days to understand the whole knowledge of IG world. That was quite a challenge. And the next year we went uh, to the five months extension of once a week uh, format. Uh, but that was also not that very good because the, we decided only to have on uh, Saturdays and uh, most participants did, did not uh, go, come after two months of attendance. Uh, then we changed the format of the shortening the program for three full days. Uh, and we opened uh, the participation to all stakeholders, not only to students. Uh, <clears throat> we uh, we had 18 uh, participants in that uh, year and uh, last year um, during the pandemic that was in September we thought that we can uh, organize a um, hybrid meeting that was our first uh, experience in fact uh, it was quite a challenge uh, but uh, we opened the application as the previous year to everyone and I was amazed to receive uh, very uh, many applications from uh, from teachers actually. All the teachers uh, of our school, since they've been involved with this educational and online platforms, they wanted to learn more about the IG world. So um, most of the uh, participants was, uh, were teachers, and uh, they mentioned that this was really a good opportunity for them because they could not come to, to the capital city to attend. Otherwise, if not the, uh, this hybrid um, format, the online format. Uh, so that one was four full days, and uh, eventually we had uh, 40 participants. I mean, the participants were more than that, but we gave certificates to those who passed all the credentials, all the uh, tests, etc., that we prepared for them. Um, and uh, you might know that in 2020, we had... Um, a war and um, the situation was pretty bad in Armenia. Uh, and when uh, the forum was ended, uh, we found that the, the, the misinformation and disinformation in the country and the knowledge of um, journalists uh, would be of um, high demand for them to know how to protect, how to, to go and uh, flow the information, etc. So this year, actually, we organized a special edition, the fifth one, uh, specifically for journalists. Um, and we managed to do that in uh, outside of the city. And that, that was face to face meeting. It was uh, very interesting. Mm, the interaction was um, a very high level and a deep discussion specifically on the topics of uh, information, trust, etc. So uh, we received the um, feedback from them and it was really very good. Uh, we might um, continue uh, organizing uh, some courses during the year, maybe some of them uh, with specific targets. So um, I think the, okay. the feedback was good in this sense. So maybe we will continue this uh, practice. And the organizers uh, over these old years, years have been um, Internet Society Armenia chapter and the registry, which I think will really be very interesting too, to have this feedback, uh, the, the support of the registry. And thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. By the way, I have a little alarm that goes off after the three minutes and uh, it'd be really nice if people paid attention to it. Pakistan School on Internet Governance. Is there someone here from there that wants to talk to it? If not, we can look at the slide for a short bit. The first one was 2015, so it's been going for a while. Each year it's held, different city, 300 plus students graduated so far. And the 2022 class will be held in Gigit, I'm sure I pronounced it wrong but 5,000 feet above sea level, that sounds cool. Next. 
Okay, European summer school. Now, Sandra, I have apology to give you. I said I was going to give you a few minutes at the beginning as the, the chair of this to say something, and then I buzzed right by it. So if you do want to include that in your time, please feel free. Uh, no, very Afri. Um, I think it is more important to give the floor to the numerous schools that are here online. Um, I would like to introduce shortly the European Summer School on Internet Governance, which I think is the last in the list of the schools today, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it is. We submitted our slide uh, as the last one, which makes a little bit sense in a way, because we've been the first one to be established. So that's why we are the last today. And I think it should be mentioned here again that um, it's great to see that so many schools across the globe are following a concept that was invented and first established by Wolfgang Kleinwächter in Meissen in 2006. And uh, not because uh, I have a relationship with him as, as he is my father-in-law, but um, I really think this uh, should be mentioned that one person in this respect really changed the world in the way that so many other uh, organizations, countries, individuals are following uh, this same concept, which became so success successful meanwhile. And I'm very glad that he is with us today and he will uh, speak later on how, about his vision, uh, how to develop this concept of schools forward. But now let me uh, just briefly refer to the to our school, which is the European one. And the name is a little bit misleading because actually we consider ourselves as a global school because we do invite fellows from across the globe. And you see that uh, from our statistical uh, breakdown here, um, the fellows by geographical region, you see that of course there is a majority from Europe, but um, there is equally, um, uh, there are equal participants from, from across the world. And um, this makes us basically very lucky and happy because um, only if you have the entire world uh, sitting in the room, you will really get the, um, or you will really get to the core of the pressuring issues uh, and how they relate to the challenges in, in each region of the world. So far, we had fellows from uh, 97 countries and, uh, uh, 363 fellows, which might not sound very huge, but this is part of our concept um, that we give a focus on uh, the networking opportunity and um, networking is better, better done if the group is not too huge. So we stick to a group size of maximum 30 people during the pandemic, we had to size down our group size a little bit, and we found that was even a better move, and we will possibly stick to that concept. Now, speaking about the pandemic, um, I personally felt, felt very, very lucky that we, besi besides the pandemic, were able to host our school as a face-to-face -face meeting also during the last two challenging years. I... Um, appreciate colleagues that move to hybrid and to uh, online versions a lot. I could not and would not do it because uh, our concept is really built on the face-to-face uh, -face interaction and the networking. And we would not try to move in the virtual world with our school because, as I said, there are colleagues who can do this much better than we can. So we will stick to our core skills and facilitate um, the, 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 the debate in this old monastery here in Meissen, and you see I have taken seat on the terrace already. Those who've been there might remember that terrace that is populated by our fellows until late at night. Regarding the dynamic coalition, let me just thank also Avri here because she is the one driving this forward since I think now three years since it was founded in Geneva and it was 2017. Since that time you were holding us together, Avri, I think that's something that needs to be applauded. Um, you're doing it very well. And uh, I think it's the only platform where all these schools basically come together and um, in this respect, I think it's Thanks. also a great movement that um, we will now have support from the IGF secretariat. And I heard Farzaneh is here, who will be uh, cooperating with us. 
And I think that's on your agenda next, Avri. So I give I, back to you. Yeah, thanks. It's not quite on the agenda next, but it is coming up. And I got to say, the only reason I do it is because you're, you're there as the chair and you keep motivating me. And as long as you keep motivating me to do it, I keep doing it. Um, but thank you. Uh, okay, I wanted to, one of the things that I didn't put in the agenda, but we normally do, is just sort of ask if anybody is starting a new school or a new program and, and wanted to say something about it. And, but very briefly, and I have two hands. So first, Alexander, and then I don't have your name, but you're next, so, so please. Okay, I'll try to be brief. Uh, Alexander Savnin, Free Moscow University. Uh, at Free Moscow University, we try to teach, to teach, to teach things uh, which are not popular or not available in official educational institutions in Russian Federation. Uh, and actually, you've seen representatives of Russia um, from parliament here. They are not very coincident with our processes. Uh, so uh, during academic year of 2020, 2021, uh, we had run twice a course of introduction to the internet governance uh broad internet governance in general or narrow one with distribution resources and it appears that it's really difficult to explain to russian students in russian language uh, how bottom-up processes works how a broad discussion is available um, uh, around 80 students signed up for our courses and we tried also to bring practical issues uh our, uh, our uh, alumni participated successfully in ICANN Next Gen. Uh, our students submitted a lot of proposals for EuroDig and participated in this. Uh, also, our students prepared uh, a workshop for this Internet Governance Forum, but it was not accepted. So uh, it's a lot of work to do with us. Uh, mostly, we tried to speak. Uh, uh, our courses run in Russian language. Uh, we tried to invite uh, active participants uh, of internet governance community, uh, IETF, uh, RIRs, ICANN. Not a lot of people speak Russians, but we also try to in, uh, invite them. And uh, as additional information, I would like to send Glenn McKnight because we can give recordings of meetings with prominent English speaking participants, uh, uh, able to give a uh, link to that materials. Uh, as we are not exact school of internet governance, uh, I hope we can start a sh few days form of school soon and really appreciate any recommendations from you, uh, any partnerships, uh, any possibilities. Thank you very much. Thank you. And next, and please introduce yourself. Okay, thank you so much. Hey, everyone. My name is Abdi Jalil Bashar Bong. So I'm coming from Chad. I am the coordinator of uh, the School of Internal Governance in Chad. So uh, I'm here with my colleague, uh, Mustafa. Is a co uh, convener also of this school. So last year we organized our first edition of a School of Internal Governance in Chad. It was very successfully because we have uh, 50 uh, people was trained, and uh, we mobilized also three speakers coming from outside. We have Sebastien from France. We have Tijani Benjama from Tunisia, and we have uh, Esther Noura, the president of ISOC Cameroon. And we have some intervention online also. From ICANN, we have YAOV. And uh, from uh, uh, Afrenic, we have uh, uh, Boris Abba. So uh, uh, this school is, uh, we work in partnership. It's, uh, it's convened by House of Africa, that I'm the president. But uh, also, we have a partnership with a national ICT agency called ADETIC. So we organize, uh, they, they paid everything. It's, uh, how the staff they paid. So we, we build the program and uh, we prepare also for, uh, for the speaker who come outside. So it was the first time that a civil society partnership with the government and sustainable project. Uh, but uh, this year we need to organize for the first time, it was uh, 14 and uh, uh, 15 December. It was at Hotels of Residence, this is our first edition. So this year we prepare our edition, second edition, but it's very, uh, hard also because we have challenging some uh, uh, lack of uh, funding also because we have only one source of uh, fun, uh, funding with the government and the team will change. And always, you know, the government side, they change the, all the teams, they change the director general, uh, advice directory and all the technical. So we need to start again. We have the agreement for four years, 
So this is one of the challenges. And most of people ask us uh, why not doing the second edition. So I'm coming here just uh, to have a partnership with uh, some uh, colleague here who have uh, funding or how they can support us with the program also. Because uh, our school, we did, we have uh, all the information in our uh, Facebook pages and our website is the Ender Foundation. So the school was face-to-face uh, -face and it was successfully in French and Arabic also. So uh, I can give uh, Thank know, you. Yeah. Uh, my colleague Mustafa. Mustafa for information it was uh, the first fellow in our school and now we, we coordinate with him. So this uh, uh, good, uh, uh, good idea to do it. So yeah. Mustafa, if you have something. Now, um... For now, that was the, the, the thing, basically have a very full agenda, but just wanted to give all new schools a chance to say something. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so another new school? Yes, thank you very much. My name is Michel Chonon. I'm coming from Cameroon. This year, we organized the first uh, uh, governance school of uh, Central Africa in Cameroon. Uh, it, it will, that uh, take place on uh, 80 to 29 with the support of ISOC. And uh, we, uh, uh, during this uh, school governance, we have uh, about 16 uh, students online. And uh, uh, the AJF Cameroon was the support and CAPDA Association. We think we are going to continue next, week, uh, next year. And uh, at this, that time, we will send you some uh, letter to talk, tell you what we wanted to do. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Okay. Thank you. And yeah, there has been a request. I see you're not, maybe you're on, no, you're probably not online. On the chat school, there was a request if there was a website and if you can send it to our list or put it on the chat if you log into the chat, but, but please. Okay. Any other schools? Oh, another, another two schools. Uh, okay, quickly, please. At first, there had only been two, and then there was four. Yes, please go ahead. Huh? Good day, everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah Kulivelli. I just joined um, the section of the school in the Ivory Coast. This is the coordinator. And then we are planning on having our first event at the end of the month. We are currently discussing with the, gov the Ivorian government um, to make sure that we put everything in place to have that host as soon as possible. Thank you. And there was another hand, yes. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thanks everyone. Uh, I would like to share uh, the information about the uh, Somalia School of Internet Governance. Uh, it's been established last year, same like JET and Cameroon. And uh, it's a, it has a functional uh, website and everything, but what we have, uh, what they are facing now for the challenges are, uh, they're not getting more uh, detail in the secretary of the IGF. Uh, because of the establishing of the uh, IGF is uh, and the school then comes after youth uh, IGF, then they go to the, put in their information into the secretary. But in that information, you see that many African countries around 24, they are not even aware of IGFs and what is going on. So in that, in that particular information, how we can read them because of the next year, IGF is going to be in Africa. Coming to Africa, but half of the African countries, they do not have established their, their IGFs. So we need, uh, for those who has, uh, uh, who has the power or the to put efforts to bring that uh, African, which we are very behind in terms of uh, the internet and accessibility, to put, to bring them in on the on the can on these uh, platforms. That is what I am going to add it. Okay, thank you. And yeah, one of the things I recommend to all of you is that you join the dynamic coalition and start participating in this because that's where you'll find contacts and support and people with you know, materials and whatever. Uh, in terms of the secretariat doing more to reach out to African school, the Dynamic Coalition obviously does not speak for the secretariat and can't, you know, but, but certainly if there's anything the Dynamic Coalition can do, let the list know. And there might be somebody on that list 
that can actually do. You, uh, Henriette, you said you wanted to say something quickly about a new South African school. Um, the South African School of IG, actually the organizers are here, but they are not, and they are in the Dynamic Coalition, but they, they, they're they not here. It took place um, in October. Um, it included a hackathon and it was a bit of a mix of an IG school and, a, and an IT school. But it was a, a really, you know, good good start. It was organized by Zadna, the CCTLD in South Africa. Avri, can I make another comment? Sure, go ahead. Um, I think what we're seeing emerge with the schools of IG is that they are exploding. They are everywhere. And I think that's really, really good. I, I think most of the schools, the new schools, are targeting younger people, students, or young professionals. I think there's a gap, and I think it's a really serious gap, and it's a gap that we try and fill in the African school, which Avery talked about earlier, and that is to get people in government that are middle, maybe senior management, same thing in private sector and in the tech community, um, because I think they are also in need of having a deeper understanding of internet governance and how to, to be effective and influential in internet governance. And, and I think this is more, it's a combination of sort of leadership development as well as IG capacity development. And we try and do that with AfriSig. And, and I find it actually very frustrating because everyone always thinks, oh, AfriSig is about youth. Actually, it's not. We have young people, but they are, they are there because they are emerging leaders. And I'm just wondering if other people feel that there's this gap as well. And if this is perhaps something that we can have like a, a subgroup um, sure. that, that could, could work on that. But I think it's a very important gap. And I think that the training that's provided by ICANN and um, sometimes by Internet Society is too, for, it's too narrow. It's, not, it's, it, it's too institution and context specific. I think we need something that's a little bit more comprehensive. Thank you. Uh, and in fact, perhaps we can look at that when we get to plans and we can certainly talk about it on the dynamic coalition list. And yeah, we can have as many little subgroups working on stuff as people want to be in little subgroups working on stuff. Okay. Uh, yes, please. Uh, yet another school? Yes, yes. Wow. Uh, je m'excuse, I'm francophone. Je suis Kierno Abdulba, je viens de la Guinée-Conakry. Je suis nouveau dans le processus de IGF et c'est dans ce cadre même que je suis venu. Et je vais vraiment, dès mon retour à Conakry, installer le IGF pour la jeunesse, IGF Youth in Conakry, et voir euh, comment mettre en place cette école de gouvernance de l'Internet en place. Et je compte vraiment sur votre soutien technique et financier pour afin de, de mettre cela en place. Donc, merci. Thank you. Um, apologize that, right, most of you probably understood. Yes. I actually understood a little. We don't have translation here for anybody that has less French than me. Apologies. He's coming from Guinea, and he says that his first time to, to be in this IGF, and he had a project to start a new uh, school of internal governance and use IGF also. So he needs our technical support, financial support to start. So, so join, join the Dynamic Coalition, and, and it's an email list, but there'll be people there that speak French, and, you know, and, and such, so we can get communications going. So, you know, welcome and please go. Okay, now I'm actually running late because I hadn't anticipated quite so many new schools, but it's kind of exciting anyhow. So I think I'll probably go a little quickly over this year. Uh, in terms of the recap of the year's activities. There were things that at last year's meeting we planned to do. We planned to do a lot more work on two of our documents, especially the operational guide, which is a document that's been started. It's part of what several of you have been talking about of how do we start? What do we do? You know, how do you organize this thing? And we basically have a toolkit document that sort of talks about the, the subject matter material. And Glenn, in fact, started, Glenn and Alfredo started a, an operational guide that sort of gets into a lot of the details, but that's a document that is a, what I call a very rich outline. 
there's a lot of discussion, but it's, but it's still small. So it needs people to fill it in. It had been our plan to work on that this year, but it's not something that people stepped up. One of the things about a bottom-up effort, the Dynamic Coalition is a bottom-up effort. If you all, the members of the Dynamic Coalition, don't contribute the text, the text doesn't get written for the most part. Farzane will probably tell us about where this helped. But I just wanted, so those are two things that remain on our list to do. We have two documents. They need more help. They need more contribution. They're already pretty good. They're living documents. So each year, hopefully they'll get better. Then though, Glenn, and I'm gonna ask him to talk about it a little, picked up, basically decided on his own. And, and that's another good thing about a bottom-up group. Somebody decides on their own to do something cool, they can do it. And basically he got a lot of support. He basically did a lot of interviews with people from the schools. I've listened to all these interviews. They're very good in terms of people discussing their, their mission, their hopes or whatever. And Glenn, I wanted to give you a little bit of time to talk about the project and it is on the website, but Glenn, please. Sure, uh, hi everybody. Um, as uh, Avery uh, said, um, it was uh, something that I suggested, but not only I suggested, I went ahead and, and organized the uh, calls. Now, uh, if you look at the, and I've put it into the, uh, the chat, the, uh, the link for you to look at, uh, there's 14 videos in total. Uh, Liana, uh, of the Armenian school I'll be doing, uh, we just have not gotten together to, to set up the uh, suitable time. So they, they average roughly uh, anywhere from roughly 20 minutes to an hour uh, in, in length. And, and the original intention of the videos was to ask people, um, how did your school adjust uh, due to COVID-19 in, in the last couple of years. Uh, what did you do? Uh, how did you adapt? And what's your plans for 22? So that was the fundamental focus. And, and people stayed to the script pretty good. Uh, and, you know, there isn't one school that's the same as the next. Some school have certain challenges um, in, in certain areas, and I'm not going to say what they are. But uh, generally speaking, this is a hard working dedicated group of volunteers that have stepped up and are, are doing a great job in, in what they're doing and making a, a huge impact. Uh, and and what, what's interesting is how uh, some schools uh, have a really uh, quite a detailed process of, of selecting fellows and, and assigning homework and, and assignments and whatnot. So it, it's quite, quite impressive. Now, um, as, as I said, uh, the main focus of this was to um, look at how they, in one word, uh, adapted to the situation. And I think they all, all did very, very well. Uh, in, in the case of uh, the North American school, we just decided not to put everything on hold in, in, in 2020. So it, it, it didn't happen. But you know, we're back into the action plan again. So I, again, I, I need to just shout out due to time. Uh, thank you all for dedicating your time. And I have one more interview to do. And, and uh, thanks again. That's it. Thank you. Uh, I had put a moderated discussion of that, of the issues. And um, but I'm wondering how many people have listened and watched these interviews, have found them, have seen them. Um, people on, on the list perhaps want to, I mean, on, on the, if anybody wants to say anything about them, we can take a few minutes before moving on from people that have listened to them, if there's any view. I've said, as I said, I've listened to them all up to now and I find them quite rich. I don't see a lot of people raising their hands on, on having listened to them or wanting to talk to them. So uh, we can move on at the moment. Uh, yes, oh, Olga. Oh, I saw the video, I just, I don't want to take a lot of time. For us, it was challenging in, in deciding what to do with the pandemic. Uh, and uh, we decided to, to go to a different environment for visual. We wanted something different. And it was extremely challenging, especially the first year, which was the first time that we did it. 
So I, I was interested in seeing how others have become this inconvenience. We learned from for the second year how to organize time and that, so it went much better. It went very well at the first year, but this year it was better. But, but the video is very good. And thank you very much, Glenn, for taking the time off the table. Thanks. Yes, one another comment, please. Yes, thanks so much. It's Abdijay for the floor. So uh, I watched the, the interview. So it was uh, wonderful because uh, it will help us the new uh, school who want to start and the new challenges also. This kind of thing we need it inside the school because we need to have, in French you call archive, yeah. we need to have documentation. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for that. Okay, yeah, thank you. So yeah, thanks, I mean, it, yeah, thank you, Glenn. It was really, you know, a really good initiative and, and I'm hoping that more schools as they come on do them and i'm really hoping people go and listen to them um anybody else have something they wanted to say on the videos as i say it's a rich resource and and then with with the documents we're collecting and some of the stuff we'll talk about next that another part of our resources that that hopefully grows each year is a resource that's maintained by by rayner and, and that's our website, and hopefully you're all aware of it. And Rainer, I don't know if you wanted to say a couple words about the website and kind of what your ambitions are for it going forward, but the floor is yours if you want it. Thanks for giving me the floor. Um, I just put a link to the, to the entry form for every school on the chat. So if there are new, Schools emerging, they should uh, just fill in this form and uh, then they are officially member of the DC. And certainly they will receive uh, all information that are available and they also can um, be part of the of the wiki and, and get uh, some some information on its school on the wiki. And if you are interested, you're also welcome to contribute there, as Glenn, for example, has done. Uh, with a lot of uh, information that may be also relevant for, for other schools. So I only can invite you if you have any ideas, if there are any things you, you think should be done with the, with the website, with the web space, uh, we have, uh, I'm happy to learn about it. And uh, if possible at all, I will try to facilitate it. So thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, the wiki is really quite a good potential resource. And as Glenn, who is probably one of our most active participants in the DC, has populated it with all kinds of information. But there's room for each and every one of the schools that wants to put information about its school, information about its courses, pictures, whatever it is you have that speaks about your school, there's an opportunity there for, for people to, to do that. So I really recommend that, that people take a look at it and, uh, you know, and, and, and add your information. It's the, the, the DC, it's dynamism. You know, people have asked, well, what's so dynamic about a dynamic coalition? It's dynamism is what you all contribute, what, what the, the source of information. So this year, Glenn was probably our, our greatest source of dynamism. But, but others have contributed over the years, others contributed this year, contributing to the wiki, uh, to the documents, to whatever is what keeps us a dynamic coalition. We're obviously a coalition, many schools, many countries, many people. So let me move on. I see no hands or people wanting to say more on that. And I wanna make sure that we don't miss some of the things on the agenda. And we've got some time left, but, and that's the plans for next year. So the first thing that I have on that is the collaborative project with the IGF secretariat. And Sandra talked a little bit about it. We've had a couple conversations in some of our meetings. For anybody that's new, we try to have a meeting. Sometimes we do it every month when we're very busy, when we've got a lot that we're doing, like, um, one of the things we do is we go through all the edits to our documents. When there's no edits to the documents, then maybe we meet every two or three months. It, it really is a, a, a variable. But anyhow, 
Uh, there's a collaborative project with the IGF Secretariat. Farzane Badi joined our call, joined our meeting rather. I'm used to doing this as a call, joined our meeting, and I'd like to give her the floor. Hi, uh, thank you, Avery. Uh, hello, everybody. Good to see you here. And I'm back at the Secretariat after a decade. So <laughs> um, I'm very excited about this uh, uh, project. And uh, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about this track that I'm developing, of course, this is going to be a cooperative, uh, collaborative uh, strategy with you and uh, others. Um, uh, so the, uh, what the Secretariat wants to do from the, the uh, deliverables, it's um, about like uh, an internet governance, like global syllabus that can be adjustable to different local uh, conditions and capacity, but also, um, uh, but also like with a focus on how you can like operationalize uh, the idea of like having an internet uh, governance school. And um, uh, for, so Avery, do I have three minutes too, or can I be given like more? <laughs> Just. Okay. You've got more than three minutes. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, so, uh, so, so basically, um, what I'm supposed to do here is to uh, work on uh, uh, work with the uh, DC on internet governance schools and uh, like the members, and as well as the broader community to. Uh, design a, a global internet uh, governance sil uh, syllabus, and uh, for that I have like uh, I'm I'm still like consulting, and I'm, I'm going to reach out uh, to you as well uh, to understand which networks we can uh, also like reach out to to uh, use their um uh, their insights about designing uh, the internet governance uh, syllabus and like a, a global syllabus that can also be uh, adapted to uh, the local uh, needs and uh, also like them uh, other thematic uh, needs so uh, i have here i have i, I have been uh, using um I, i'm looking at the dc a toolkit, which is a very, very uh, interesting and uh, uh, also like uh, it has a lot of information on it. I, I, I am uh, going to uh, design that in a way that um, like design this document that I'm going to uh, I'm going to produce in a way that it gets insight from this toolkit. And uh, but also reach out to like various educational uh, uh, programs that are already out there and around the world and not necessarily uh, only in uh, uh, North America or uh, developed countries. So I'm going to reach out to an academic network such as uh, like, you know, there's this GigaNet that like, also there are like professors at schools and uh, that teach internet governance to get insights from there. And uh, uh, also, so uh, one of the things that I, I think that we need to uh, think about and uh, decide is uh, who is this uh, document that we are going to uh, provide it for and it's, you know, who is this uh, syllabus for and uh, I was thinking that maybe teachers and professors and stakeholder groups around the world that they want to like know about internet governance or they want to teach it at their school. It can be a study aid. It can be, uh, of course, communities that want to convene a school of, of internet governance. And then also communities that want to train a workforce, initiate and strengthen thematic, regional, and local internet governance forum initiatives even. I, I know it's a bit too ambitious. Uh, we are we are gonna like work on like limiting it, and uh, I will. I this is all with consultation with the um, uh, IGF secretariat. And then uh, one part that is very important, and I'm gonna be done uh, after this. Uh, uh, so uh, 
are also like perhaps create structures to crowdsource issues specific local educational materials and uh, uh, and have like a core program core global internet governance syllabus but also uh, have uh, all these like other issues that might be more uh, thematic and I, I also need to we also uh, want to uh, implement some kind of like a monitoring process to see if this uh, syllabus is actually uh, being used by schools and, and uh, our uh, and our audience. How is it how is it being used? So we can survey the newly established schools about how useful it uh, it is, and this is like in, in the long run, and uh, uh, like also like. Uh, uh, will it help like um, non-IG schools in training their staff or uh, planning IG events even and uh, and also working on the dynamic coalition uh, 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 members and uh, also um, inviting them to join the schools that are not already uh, members and uh, I'm, I'm working on that. I have uh, done a little bit of work on uh, who is not a member by the school and uh, other like uh, I, I'm also like kind of looking at the broader um, uh, landscape of internet governance education. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to open discussion, but what I'd really like to do is I've got about a little over 10 minutes before I want to leave time at the end for, for, for Wolfgang to, to talk. So we've got about 10 to 15 minutes where I basically want to open up the discussion to any of these topics. And any of these topics that we don't talk about enough today, we can talk about at our next meeting in a month or two, whenever it gets scheduled for, because we... we go on all the time. So it's not like we do it today and then we wait another year. So I wanna open the floor uh, to any of the stuff you see in this agenda here. I've already talked about the toolkit and operations guide, not much to say about it unless you're gonna write in it. So, but it's there, it needs work. Uh, yes, all I got Olga and I've got Ilana. So Olga, please. Thank you, Avery. Uh, two questions. Ah, okay. the, the meetings that you mentioned that, that you have every two, three months or sometimes, yeah. are they open? I mean, we can yep, participate. Everything's open to anybody. But that you, uh, you, you, you invite by the email list? Uh, honestly, yes. I, I may have missed. Okay. So yep. I will pay more yeah. attention. That's my yeah, No, everything <laughs> is on the email list. Okay. When I get it together, mm -hmm. all things being equal, assuming I continue doing this. Thank you. Um, I'll send out a notice, you know, two, three weeks in advance. And then as the meeting comes up, I try to send out reminders. I've tried to do an exercise of trying to schedule these in friendly times, given that it's a yeah. global thing, but I'm not sure how successful I've been. Uh, so, but- and I know I, I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to join in one of them and I, I didn't, and I did re saw yeah, the recording. I think you're on the list now. I know we went through, uh, is your email on the list or not question at one point, but I think that got resolved. Thank you. And another question for Farsani, how, how Farsani, how do you plan to, to work with us? How can we help you in, in doing your job or do you have a, any ideas to share with us? Uh, yes, uh, so uh, I have, uh, so I'm going to reach out to you. I'm going to talk to the secretary as well next week. I, just, I was just taking on like last yeah, week. Uh, so I'm going to, so I'm going to talk to the secretary uh, uh, next week, and then um, and then I'm going to reach out to each of you, each like members of the uh, dynamic coalition, but other uh, other schools as well, and I'm going to uh, provide you with a um, kind of like a strategy document that will lay out what I'm going to be doing and then you can like comment on that and then I in that strategy uh, document I will uh, ask like for um, uh, information if I need I have been looking at your websites and uh, social media and they're very helpful uh, but I will get back to you with like specific uh, question and information thank you uh first are are you subscribed to the dc list yes good it's, 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 
<laughs> Good. And people can reach out to you if, if, if they have something or just dying to contribute. Oh, if they might, if they're dying to contribute, of course. Right. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put my email in the chat. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Okay, so at the moment on the list, I've got Ilana Henriette and Abdel Jalil. So, Ilana. Okay, thanks. Uh, I just want to raise the point that I already have raised during the DC meetings. And this is actually on the agenda uh, about the linkage between the uh, fellows from the schools and the probably faculty of the schools. So as we see, the number of schools is growing and we have like more than a dozen already, but we're really lacking the uh, networking between our alumni about the fellows. And I think this is a good uh, start for, for them because the one of the major um, aims of schools is just to get people prepared to, to participate in internet governance processes, events. And uh, if we can uh, meet, uh, if we can join them together uh, on the uh, school level, it would be a good start for them. So uh, it's an open question. Uh, it's really hard to propose anything just right now, but probably some kind of repository of contacts would be a good starting point. Okay, thanks. Now, Rainer did not mention them, but we do indeed have provision on the website for fellows and faculty to contribute their information. So that already exists, though I don't think it has been used much. I think, Alana, you've mentioned this a couple times, and, and I'd almost encourage you to follow Glenn's example. And, and, you know, certainly I'll give a hand where you ask for one if you decide to take on this challenge, since it really does appear like a challenge you're interested in. And, and Rainer will also, you know, be willing to help with whatever's needed in terms of the website. Now, in terms of what kind of tools, what kind of mechanisms, those are things that, you know, if you can get a couple people to get in touch that are willing to work with you on, you know, it is perhaps a challenge that you want to take on. Again, I emphasize that the bottom up nature of the dynamic coalition that anybody's free to put out a good idea, and anybody is free to jump on that good idea and help work on it, but don't necessarily expect that I will get to working on it, but I'm always willing to help a little. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense to you. Yeah, yeah, uh, thanks. Yep, okay, thanks. I'm sorry, you know, have a good idea. I'll ask you to work on it. Uh, Henriette, you were next. Um, thanks. Um, actually, I wanted to respond to Fazi, but I'll start also, I want to respond to Ilona. Uh, that's something we actually do quite successfully in AFRISIG. Um, uh, AFRISIG started in 2013, and from the beginning, we have an alumni mailing list. So automatically, every year, the class is added to that mailing list. We have reunions at events in Africa. People get together and take pictures, and, and people get jobs. They get research money through that alumni um, mailing list. Since 2016, the fellows have started using WhatsApp. And so now every year um, since 2016, there's a WhatsApp group. And in fact, for me, that's been a challenge because there's so much active networking between the fellows from one year on the WhatsApp group that it's kind of hard to get them to use email for the, the comprehensive list. Um, and then just the other thing I wanted to say, um, Farzi, is something that we use in AFRISIG very effectively is evaluation and monitoring. We, we do every year quite an in-depth evaluation um, and we take this very seriously. And then we also do every few years tracer studies where we do longitudinal um, evaluations of what the impact of the school um, has been. And then just my final comment, I think it's great that you are doing this project, but I also want to, to you know, I've been doing the curriculum for AFRI6 since the beginning and every year it is different because there are new things. There are, we have a free trade agreement in Africa being discussed at the moment. So this year we had a strong focus on trade. Um, we didn't have that last year. And I just think that when you develop this, just make sure that you keep that openness. You know, internet governance is not static. 
And I think our internet governance capacity development does have to, to reflect that. So just create a, curric a curriculum that people can use wholesale, I think is not enough. And I know you will do it really well. I'm so glad it's you. And in fact, that's been the idea behind the toolkit. While we decided that we couldn't do a curriculum, so we wrote about the general subjects and, and issues. Abdel Jalil. And okay. then, and then. Thank you so much for giving me the floor. So um, thank you to Farzani. I think that we have now a focal point between us and it, it, uh, it is a good, uh, good point. So the big challenge also, how to map out the school of internal governance. So I think that it will be a big challenge as he, we see in DC also, there are some schools not affiliated or not uh, and mainly list of DC. So I think that it will be good also to contact uh, Anya, the secretary, to see there are some school who managed by the NRI, some schools are independent, some school with the government, some school. So it will be the big challenge. And also we have a toolkit. A toolkit, uh, we can do it like uh, a video and we can put it in icon courses also. It will be good because some people reading the document is so difficult for them as we did for uh, for toolkit of NRIs. So if there are some video, so it will be very easy for the people. And also for the sustainable uh, funding because it's the challenge key for us because for South developing country, uh, money is a big issue. If we planify everything, for example, for our second edition, we have our program, we have everything, but challenging money is a big challenge also. So how we can planify together as we did in IGFSA, like this to support the NRIs, how we can do the same in the School of Internal Governance. So I need to stop there. Thanks so much. Thank you. Lots of great ideas. And I, and, and I say the same thing that I say to everybody with a great idea is look forward to you and others working on it, you know, because that I keep repeating myself, but it really is the only way we move forward. In, in, in years where nobody contributed, nothing happened. Uh, you know, in years where people contribute, it, it's rich. So really, please. Um, good morning, good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, my good name is Keith Ander um, from Africa. I think um, I've been very privileged and that's why I sit here today having gone through a School of Internet Governance. So I'll speak uh, first of all as a fellow of um, a School of Internet Governance in terms of the capacity development that I got um, through the school. And then secondly, um, some of the issues um, highlighted you know, yeah, on the board there. Um, for me, I think um, I'll speak to uh, localization of the uh, schools of internet governance. So we've seen it at global level and how it's working very, uh, very well. Also looking at, um, you know, the summer school and all of that. Uh, at regional level, uh, you know, speaking from Africa, we have the AFRICIG. Um, Andrit has, you know, spoken about it that started in 2016, I think, in Durban. Uh, and we've... 2013, yes, sorry, 2013, yes. Um, and we've also seen a lot of NRIs taking this down at national level. But um, at national level, if we were to look at it holistically from a national level, I think it's also very elite um, because the people who are able to access schools of internet governance is very elite. You either are connected in one way or the other, uh, and therefore we don't quite get a lot of national representation, especially people who we consider to have been left behind. So I think, we probably need to also uh, cascade, it, cascade it down beyond national level to sort of um, micro level, either at local level or community level, because this will also give context um, to the school. Uh, in one village is very different from another village, for example. And I think this will also be very, very helpful in terms of bringing uh, schools of internet governance down at the local level. Now that we are talking about last mile, now that we are also talking about, um, you know, reaching to the unconnected. Um, and the second thing, that ties to that, um, you know, is digital literacy. Uh, you know, we see a lot of engagement around um, schools of internet governance and it can be quite packed. Uh, for those who are not digitally literate, uh, I think there's also a disconnect. Um, and for me, looking at, you know, sustainability of engaging um, the fellows in terms of also 
contributing at local level because beyond just um, you know the, the the fellows connecting amongst each other, there there needs to be a lot more of innovation on how um, the fellows can also contribute uh, either through curriculum development or in a way that we can localize also the content. One of the challenges uh, is localization of the content and curriculum uh, that we see. So I think. Um, uh, that will also play a very big role. Lastly is the involvement of um, parliamentarians uh, around the schools of um, internet governance. We haven't seen quite a lot of participation from uh, the parliamentarians and the legislatures in terms of uh, also building their capacity, you know, to engage on matters of, um, you know, uh, uh, internet governance. And we see this a lot on, uh, you know, ICT committees for various parliamentarians where they are unable to even articulate some of this issue. And some of those who are um, uh, uh, conversant with ICT because members of parliament are not necessarily uh, people with background from ICT, even going to the committee and lobbying their colleagues on what to say before they're able to contribute to some of, you know, the bills that come to the floor. Thank you so much. Thank you. I've got, I've got two more speakers. I've got uh, one, the remote hub, uh, Dhaka, Bangladesh, and then one uh, in the room. And so, and then I want to go to to, to move to, to Wolfgang. As I say, all of these discussions can be continued. So uh, Remote Hub, please. Uh, good evening. Am I audible? Yeah. Hello. Uh, hello, Hub. Hello. 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 Uh, good evening uh, from Remote Hub, Dhaka, Bangladesh. So I have some uh, comments uh, regarding the internet school forum so the student at this moment uh, there is not spending much time to study so the, the have patience of them so we need to arrange some uh, psychological motivation for our young learners how we can do that another one the remote level you know they are not as much developed as today's you know the developed parts of the country. So how we can uh, actually relate the young learners and connect them, the knowledge level update to the remote area. And my last question is how we can include the academic linkage among the fellows and faculty members. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And those are, are, are actually good long-term D d d discussions, the whole how do it sort of melts into the localization, the local, the young, the motivations. So I think these are really good topics for us to take up and go further over the course of, of next year and, and, and see where we can get to on them. Uh, please. Um, thank you. My, my name is Nema Lugangira. I'm a member of parliament from Tanzania. And what I wanted to say is that um, I think the missing link in, in most of these discussions is that you find that civil society is present, youth are present, and other, other different kinds of groups, but then we leave aside parliamentarians who at the end of the day, we are at the you know, center of all of these development um, agendas when it comes to internet governance, et cetera. So I just wanted to get an understanding when we're talking about School of Internet Governance Fellows, how then can we also accommodate parliamentarians to be part of the fellows? Because one of the biggest challenges that I see is um, our capacity to fully understand the dynamics of internet governance such that we're then able to adequately um, advise and inform policy and um, put to task our respective governments. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's a tough problem. And I think it's another one that's good for us to put on our agenda for the year and sort of talk about it. You know, get parliamentarians to go to schools, get schools to go to parliamentarians. There's a real difficult though. And, you know, I sort of find me presuming to go talk to a parliamentarian and teach them? Well, not unless they ask for it, but they're not gonna ask for it unless I presume. So it's a really good topic because there really is a deadly embrace. Yeah, I know, but they came. But it wasn't me going to find parliamentarians to, to teach, but I, it's a good point. 
I'm going to stop this great discussion now. I need to move to, to Wolfgang. Join our calls. Let's continue the discussions on the list and joining calls. Um, but I really did ask Wolfgang to speak and I expect he prepared. And if there's any time left after he's finished, I'll come back to discussion. But if there's not, the list, the calls, please. Wolfgang. Ah, thank you, Avri, and uh, thank you very much. And I'm really fascinated, you know, how this idea which came out of the WIKIC and the uh, early days of the World Summit on the Information Society more than 15 years ago has evolved over the 15 years. And we have now this wonderful network of uh, national and regional and global schools and internet governance. On Monday in a day zero event, so I met again virtually Peng Swa from uh, Singapore because he, like Avri, was a member of the Wiki. And at this time, he was the president of the International Communication Association. I was the president of the law section of the International Association for Media and Communication Research, both our NGOs under UNESCO. And we uh, uh, organized uh, a, a meeting like a day zero meeting uh, on uh, the eve of the World Congress of the ICA in Treston, in a small village outside of Treston, where we said, what can we do now with the Tunis agenda as academic persons? And uh, so two ideas came out. One was the GigaNet, and the other one was the concept of a summer school. And the concept of a summer school was driven by two basic ideas. One uh, basic idea was that internet governance is a multidisciplinary phenomenon. Uh, and uh, normally it's universities, academic institutions are organized around disciplines. So you can study uh, law, business, uh, informatics, uh, political science. So, but the internet governance uh, goes across a lot of disciplines. In so far, you, we had to invent something new a multi interdisciplinary course. And the second thing was, uh, it's not enough to have academic teachers. So it's a learning in a multi-stakeholder environment. So you, you have to understand the role uh, of uh, the technical people who manage this. You have to see the business dimension. You have to see what are the user's perspective. And you have to understand the role of government. So these two basic ideas, the multidisciplinary and the multi-stakeholder approach, where the starting point uh, for the pilot project, which we did 15 years ago in Meissen. And I'm very happy to see that, you know, more or less now, more than 20 schools have taken this concept and uh, have it further, further developed. So uh, I remember in 2008, 9, 10, uh, so we discussed why not to create a global academy. But then we rejected this idea and uh, established the dynamic coalition. And I think this was a very wise decision because this dynamic coalition uh, gives you an, a lot of flexibility because <coughs> you have so different local needs and you have different experience over different models, you know, how to design a special uh, school in your country, in your region. And so the beauty of the whole uh, process now, which has started 15 years ago, is also the pluralism the diversity and the different models which have emerged. So, and I, I think this is very good because we can learn uh, from different models and can be inspired. And I'm in particular thankful for, for Avri, which has collected all the experience and channeled this now uh, via her leadership as chair of the Dynamic Coalition. I'm also thankful to Rainer uh, because he is the, the, the good ghost behind uh, the, the, the managing of, of this network. And I'm also in, in particular thankful to all the sponsors for the various schools, because this is really a community effort. So we have not a state budget or other uh, big budget. So that means each school has to find its own way. And without the, the, without the engagement of uh, many uh, uh, units from the technical community, uh, from the private sector and, 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 and other organizations. In particular, the various constituencies from, from ICANN, CCTLDs, GTLDs, 
you know, ISOC uh, and, and, and the IRs and, and in, in particular ICANN. I think this is extremely helpful. So um, looking forward, so uh, I would see three issues, you know, which uh, um, should be uh, also further discussed. I think it's very good that Fasene is now on board and will help to uh, streamline a work plan for the years ahead of us. Uh, a first big issue is, and this is also a conclusion from the debates uh, we had now in the, in the IGF, is that I see uh, a, a low level of understanding of many new stakeholders on the differences between public policy issues and the technical issues. So I think to understand that this is a layered system, that the governance of the internet on the technical layer has to be different from the uh, uh, governance uh, model on the public policy layer. I think this is uh, 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 an important thing which has to be delivered also via our schools. And as somebody has said, you know, uh, the, th this is a moving target, the substance and, and, and the curricula of uh, the, um, the, 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 the summer schools has to evolve according to the special needs and 2022 is different from 2012 or uh, even earlier. Um, what I would also see is a big opportunity to establish something like a sick library. So we have now seen a, a lot of uh, documents which came out, you know, the great video series published by Glenn McKnight. So, but this is still distributed and unorganized. I think to have something like a sick library, you know, this, where we have uh, uh, online materials in printed form, or let's say that we can download as PDFs or videos, I think this would be a very good step forward. And then uh, the third and final point is we have to look at, you know, what is going on uh, uh, in the more broader environment. Uh, what I see now as a start of a new beginning is the decision by the General Assembly of the United Nations for the establishment of an open-ended working group for cybersecurity, where capacity building is a high priority. So they have a five-year plan now for capacity building in cybersecurity. And certainly we can make a contribution uh, 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 to this. So, and this is also, you know, then related to how we focus our activities. So uh, in, in two directions, whether we uh, develop curriculum for special issues like cybersecurity, digital economy, human rights, or what else. Uh, and then uh, how we have the right target with the fellows. So the capacity building uh, processes are primarily for diplomats. Uh, but uh, what just the lady from Tanzania said, we could also uh, uh, develop a, a, a special course for parliamentarians because uh, they are the lawmakers and they have to understand, you know, what's going on then to make the right laws. So that means these are the two uh, uh, um, lanes for further development. What I see specific causes on special issues, uh, which are pressing now in the, on the global agenda, also uh, uh, towards the global digital compact, which it was proposed by UN Secretary, uh, UN Secretary General Guterres, and then you know special targets, diplomats, law uh, uh, judges, uh, parliamentarians, and also young people. Uh, you know, our model in Meissen says, you know, learning in a multi-stakeholder environment. So we want to have a right mix so that people can learn from each other. This is good. But on the other hand, if you want to go to a higher level, you need specialized courses. And uh, probably this is uh, uh, the next step in a process, you know, which hopefully will uh, bring us uh, uh, further forward uh, to the uh, 2030 when we have to have the, the final date for the sustainable development goals, because capacity building, learning, education is one of the key aspects of the SDGs. And uh, with this, uh, thank you very much. And um, I hope we can fire, have good successes in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wolfgang. Thank you so much, everybody that came to this. I look at what's ahead. If we have the people that want to talk and work on it, we're in a great position to have a very busy and dynamic year of this coalition. So thank you all. And we've already overrun our time. So thank you. <laughs>